and monitor. Still no signal. No. Time to have a remote control for a monitor. Never mind. Okay. Okay, what I did was take a failed monitor by some parts from China, connect it all up, and got it working. At the time, I had a banana pie, and I thought, well, why not stick it all together? And that's what I did. I'm powering it from a 12 volt printer supply, but obviously you can't shove 12 volts into your pie, so I stuck a few regulators on there. The regulators I used because of what was available locally are the small charge, uh, USB chargers you plug in your car. Still gives a 5 volt output. Because I also had a failed laptop, I had a spare hard drive. <laughs> so, the banana pie, unlike most of the others, actually I'm supposed to be clicking through this thing, aren't I? I like that. Where are we going? Why isn't it showing it to me? I hate PowerPoint. <laughs> and this isn't even PowerPoint. It's worse. Stay chill. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh. Finally. Yeah, I have a blog where I've got more information on there. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Yeah, oh, that's a homework. <laughs> but the banana pie uses the A20 chip, which has native Ethernet port built in. It's also got native SAT port. So as a data server, it will easily outperform the quad core machines and even the latest Raspberry Pi 3. When it comes to calculating, it doesn't have the muscle. But if you're just using it for a database or a web server, this is the one to use. So that's what I did. And to get this set up, it takes a little bit of work, but not so much. Where are we going? Yeah. Okay, as most of you already know, we're operating with Linux on these boards. So I put on MySQL database, Apache web server, PHP. Also, I have mail services on my own, and a few extra little bits and pieces. So, that's basically what I've done. Oh. And if you don't know about Samba, which I'm sure a lot of you do, it's the piece of software that allows you to use Windows networking to connect to Linux boxes. Definitely something to Google. More homework. <laughs> but don't worry, it's, worth, it's not as bad as brain surgery. You'll be all right. And being a developer, I use version control software. SVN. SVN. Well, SVN I'm more familiar with, and it was readily available on Linux. So I just installed it. <laughs> okay. Go on, go on. Right? Let's not fight about SVN. <laughs> okay, we won't fight about SVN. Would you like CBS instead? Yes. <laughs> okay, now we know who the developers are because they're all laughing. <laughs> but of course, people think about version control purely in the context of software development. However, it's also very, very useful if you're writing novels and things like that. Because if you mess it up, you can go back a chapter. Start again and make it more interesting. So it's got a lot of uses. And there's a few of the things you can use in far, but a lot of you already knew this too. So, yeah, it's still easier than brain surgery. <laughs> So you have it there exactly what can be done. The advantage this board has is you can strap a proper hard drive to it, which is cheap and very easy to get a terabyte of data in there if you want. <clears throat> I 
another one for the getting started people, not for the experts, you already know. Normally, when you get your computer and set it up first, you've got to get it on the command line somehow. If you don't have a screen, it's very easy over the network or a serial port. In my case, I'm hardcore, I use the serial port. <laughs> and that's the adapter that should be in every hacker's toolkit. USB to serial. A little bit more about setting up the hardware. There's plenty of devices readily available now from China. Cost peanuts, and I have a few of them on the side here. A 5 volt, 5 amp power supply. You can hook that up and use any old laptop supply then as your main supply for it. I used a pair of them on here so I could power 12 volt and 5 volt <coughs> because I needed to read a 3.5 inch drive. And of course, if you're connecting external USB drives to Raspberry Pis or any of the other Pis, it overloads the USB port. You've got to use a powered USB hub or hack a cable for it. That's the power supply. That's a few dollars and takes out five amps. One thing you must do with these is adjust the voltage before you connect it to anything. And how do you do that? So you don't actually touch it. Yeah. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always a good idea. How do you The cost so that it doesn't change. Oh, excellent. Uh, this unit has maximum input voltage of around 30 volts and its output voltage will vary from, I think it's 2.5 volts up to around you know, 25 volts or something of that nature. And when I was putting this little uh, mess together, <laughs> you can see what I've got here. A new uh, lamp driver, new control board because they were both gone in the monitors I had. A banana pie, hard drive, and power supplies I extracted from the cigar chargers for your car. Yeah, there's a bit of hot glue in there holding that all together too. So, I've been messing about with Arduinos lately as well, and I've discovered that I can get an Arduino to work as an I2C slave, as well as an I2C master, so I'll be hooking that up to my pie next. So, I, there you have it. Yeah. further questions or wants to do anything like this, come look for me and we'll have a chat about exchange email addresses and so on. Okay? Thank you.